One of the Netherlands' most renowned and outstanding lawyers has found herself in serious trouble. A lawyer that is known for her particular look. However, don't let the looks fool you. You don't want to have her against you in the courtroom. Her incredible track record speaks for itself, but one of the clients she decided to represent might become her downfall. This is the story of the Dutch lawyer Inez Vesky. Please note that this is a developing story, and by the time you're watching this, there might have been significant updates. I will definitely keep you posted. Inez Vesky was born in 1955 in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. After studying for her law degree at the Erasmus University in Rotterdam for several years, in 1978, she finally became a lawyer. She started working at the law firm of her sister, Miriam Vesky, that she started in 1976. Inez is a self-proclaimed workaholic and control freak. She is also an interesting sight to see in the legal profession, always dressed in black, with her pitch black hair and signature black eye makeup. Her son, Guy Vesky, is a lawyer as well and works together with his mother for the same law firm. Some of you may already know her. It is safe to say that she is one of the most well-known and feared lawyers in the Netherlands. If she gets involved in a case, she will not let go until she succeeds. In the last few decades, Inez Vesky has represented some quite infamous people. One of them was Daisy Bouterse, ex-president of Suriname. He was convicted in the Netherlands for drug smuggling. She also represented Gus Kauenhoven, a Dutch businessman with multiple businesses in Liberia. Gus was convicted for selling weaponry, among other things. But of course, her most notorious client is most definitely the Netherlands' most well-known criminal, Ridwan Tahi. At this point, we all know Tahi. For those who don't, in short, Ridwan Tahi is one of the biggest and most notorious criminals in the Netherlands till this date. He was caught in Dubai in December 2019 and extradited to the Netherlands. The Marengo trial is a trial against Ridwan Tahi and 16 other suspects, who are expected to receive life sentences. Ridwan Tahi is accused to be the head of the organization responsible for international drug smuggling and multiple hits. Basically, someone who is in need of an exceptional lawyer. Many have questioned why she accepted him as her client in 2019. Tahi is accused of a number of terrible crimes, which if these accusations are valid, makes you rather want to avoid him. She always publicly defended Ridwan and openly questioned the Dutch prosecutors about their ways of handling Ridwan Tahi and his case. Just a few weeks ago, on the 19th of April, Inez Vesky even filed a police report in name of Ridwan Tahi for the provocation of a possible kidnapping or murder in Dubai, supposedly planned by Dutch government services. Sil A was a Dutch commando, although besides being a commando, he was allegedly part of Tahi's group as well. According to Sil, Dutch government services asked members of the secret service if it was a possibility to neutralize Tahi in Dubai or in Iran in case they could not arrest him. The Dutch Ministry of Justice and Security strongly denied these allegations, saying we have obviously never thought about kidnapping Ridwan Tahi, eliminate or neutralize him. However, this rumor by former commando gone rogue Sil A was reason enough for Tahi and Vesky to file the police report. It is not yet clear whether this will turn into a serious investigation of the matter, but it definitely showed that being the lawyer of someone of this caliber is a crazy roller coaster. Out of nowhere, on the 21st of April 2023, the breaking news erupted that Inez Vesky was arrested by Dutch police. All the headlines in the Netherlands were about her that day. Never in the history was there a lawyer of her stature arrested or jailed. Her office in Rotterdam and her home have been raided and thoroughly searched by police, which is quite unusual to do because of the strict confidentiality laws a lawyer has to operate under. She is accused of being part of a criminal organization that is involved in the international drug trade, money laundering, and violating her confidentiality as a lawyer. It must be said that she is explicitly not accused of participating in any hits nor violence in the underworld related to her clients Ridwan Tahi, Mao R, and Mario R. 
This event derived all the way back from 2021. Yusuf Tahi, a nephew of Ridwan Tahi, was part of his lawyer team for some time. Being a part of the team, Yusuf Tahi was one of the few who was able to visit Ridwan in the heavily guarded prison, the EBI. In October 2021, Yusuf is arrested on the suspicion of being a messenger for Ridwan Tahi. Ridwan gave Yusuf messages that allowed him to run his criminal business even though he was locked up, meaning Yusuf played a key role in Ridwan's criminal organization. The Department of Justice also accused him of helping his nephew with planning a potential violent escape from the EBI. Yusuf said the following in court about his nephew. He tells you information, and even though you don't want to hear it, it is shared with you. That is how you get sucked into it. Millimeter by millimeter. Not doing what was said could bring me in serious trouble. Not cooperating could make me look like an informant. I knew too much. I hoped to get out of this quietly, but I guess it did not work. The Department of Justice, however, does not believe any of that. In taped phone calls, it became clear that Yusuf was not scared to say no to his nephew. Yusuf and Ridwan would communicate by writing on pieces of paper and showing it to each other through the glass between them. The Department of Justice eventually could not prove whether Yusuf did it out of free will or under pressure. Nonetheless, they still sentenced him to 5.5 years in prison for playing a key role in Ridwan's criminal organization. In addition, they included that Yusuf had done significant damage to the image of Dutch jurisdiction. However, during this trial against Yusuf Tahi, it was strongly suggested that he was not the only one functioning as a messenger for Ridwan Tahi. On a hearing in July 2022, none other than Inez Vesky's name got dropped as a messenger as well. According to intercepted messages between family members of Ridwan Tahi, they gave her a USB stick with secret information. She had to show Ridwan the information on this USB stick via her laptop and share his answers with the family. These family members could then take the necessary actions. One of the intercepted messages read, If she can take it with her Friday, that would be great. Then we will have a response within a week. Even better if she would print it out too. Leaked messages also show that during this exact time, Tahi's son had contact with Rafael Imperiale. Apparently Rafael and Ridwan, both business partners, still had some outstanding business in regards to the drug trade. Yusuf Tahi's lawyer, Andre Seibertz, said there was already a direct communication line from Ridwan with the outside world before his client Yusuf even stepped foot inside the EBI. With this statement, he was somewhat pointing his finger to Inez Vesky, as she was the only one who was visiting Ridwan at the time. Inez in her turn denied all the allegations, but it was safe to say that ever since this moment Inez Vesky was being heavily investigated. In the past year, Vesky's name was mentioned so often in relation to the leaked information from the EBI that it was only a matter of time before she would be arrested. According to the NRC, she said to colleagues that she felt something coming. Well, she was right. After her arrest, her lawyers have shared that she will stop representing Ridwan Tahi. For now, it is unknown who will represent him in the future. The question is whether someone is even willing to do it at this point. At the time of writing, no one has offered to step up. As this is an ongoing case, it cannot be said whether Inez Vesky is guilty or not guilty. An old quote regarding her work with clients from her interview with a newspaper NRC goes as follows. Quote, If I don't want to do something, I don't do it. Do whatever you like, I say, but not with me. It is hard to say whether she did it willingly or maybe got pressured to do it. If what is said is true, I will keep my eyes on this case and will inform you if anything interesting happens. See you in the next one.